If you were a former Herald of Galactus, what do you think your next job would be? Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where we take trade paperbacks in single issues and we break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. Then every read is dramatically back to you. All alterations of the panels, text, and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. Today we're going to be covering the newest Silver Surfer stories written by Dan Slott of Spider-Man fame. It's actually a great story in my opinion, and you guys should definitely check it out. This is the first half of Volume 1. Our tale begins with the Silver Surfer reviving a sun. The sun was about to dim, but the Silver Surfer can use his power cosmic to properly reignite it, and this entire microsystem is saved. He reaches down to one of the micro planets, where he asks if the little people are okay. And the tiny people of Brundulus III declare, Praise the Surfer! Praise him! They scurry to make statues and monuments to his order. Oh no, people of Brundulus, I do not seek your praise. But the Surfer raising his hands puts the fear of the Surfer into the tiny people. Oh no! We've angered him! Please don't put out our sun! He ends up raising his hands higher. No, you misunderstand. I leave you in peace. Farewell. And with that, he surfs off into space to once again find a new mission. And that's when some floating robots find him. Congratulations, you have been appointed our new champion. You could go down in history as the hero that saved the Empiricon. The what? What is the Empiricon? Why, it's the greatest place in all of time and space. I've been to every corner of this galaxy. If this Empiricon of yours is so famous, I'm sure I would have heard of it. No, that is by design that no Herald of Galactus knows about it. It is hidden from all of you. A portal suddenly opens up and out flies some soldiers. A Herald! Gatekeepers, use whatever force is necessary to stop him. And they begin opening fire on the surfer. What madness is this? You invited me. But shortly after that, a man in a convertible car rides up. Stop! The surfer is our guest. I am the Incredulous Zed. Zed then lowers the shields, showing the surfer. The Empiricon! The Impossible Palace. He then insists on giving the surfer a tour of this place. It is a luxury planet filled with the greatest wonders in the entire planet. One of the entire moons is a nightclub, and the flowers nearby, those are skiing resorts. There's also a bazaar that runs down the middle of the entire planet and it never shuts down. The surfer can't believe that all of these people can keep this place a secret, but Zed explains that the fear of Galactus will ignite all of the races of the universe. Zed then explains that they need the surfer's help to defeat an oncoming threat. The Never Queen is coming for the Empiricon's energy source, so the Empiricon is sending champions out there to stop her. But every champion has fallen, the last of them being a champion named Battlejack. They then show a scene of Battlejack's death, in which he declared that he would do this for the fate of his father. But the surfer stops Zed there. What did he mean by the fate of his father? So Zed explains, the device that they use to select the surfer as the next champion is called the Motivator. And it doesn't just pick a champion, it reaches out over space and time and it finds one person in all of creation that means the most to the champion. And then brings that person to the Empiricon as leverage. But there was no need. I said I would defend you. Show me this leverage. Who is it? Shalabal? My mother? Alicia Masters? Nova? Mantis? Who? And in front of them, they see Don Greenwood. The surfer pauses. Okay, I have absolutely no idea who that is. He leans over to the projector that is showing him the girl. Dawn, who are you? She can't hear him, but she does explain. Anyone there? I'm Dawn Greenwood from Earth. You know, the planet. Earth. It's always someone from Earth. Um, I come in peace? Zed! She can't hear you, surfer, but she has one soul in the balance as we prepare for the Never Queen. You are our last hope! So the surfer turns back to her. Dawn Greenwood, I don't know you. I've never met you. But know this. I am Norn Rad of Zenala the Silver Surfer, and I will save you. So he takes off right for the Never Queen. But while he's doing that, Dawn isn't about to sit around. She learns that her cellmates are the other family members of the champions, which no one is aware of, but the champions have all been killed. And Dawn figures out a plan using the food that the Empiricon has brought to her to get the acids of the blob creature working and burn out the holding cells freeing her and all of those around her. Boy, Dawn is in a damsel in distress, is she? She then leads the prisoners to freedom. While this is going on, the Silver Surfer accidentally destroys the droids that were following so that Zed can no longer see or hear his actions, and he stops to talk to the Never Queen. She isn't actually there to harm anyone, she is the Never Queen, the keeper of possibilities, and she can see all of the possible futures, and she keeps the universe on track. But Zed took her heart from her, and he's using it to power the Empiricon. She is here to try and get her heart back, but as she displays her power to the Surfer, it begins to tear him apart! While this is being explained, Dawn is leading her little army of prisoners through the hallways of the Deep Empiricon, and they happen to come across the core of the Empiricon, and the core that we know is a heart. She pauses for a second as she realizes that her life could be ending, 
so she makes a wish on the heart. There's so much more to see and do, she doesn't want it to end here. Back with the Never Queen, the surfer recovers, and he wonders, why am I alive? The Never Queen explains that it was the girl, the one whose destiny is entwined with his. She made a wish saving him. I do not understand, she is nothing to me. No, she's everything. She's the girl who made a wish so long ago, both on you and for you, and now her wish has changed. The Never Queen explains that Zed used a blade from another reality to slice her heart out, and that the Earth Girl is running free on the Empiricon right now. So the Surfer decides that he needs to get back, he has to stop Zed and save the girl. He finds one of the floating champions, Battlejack, and he takes his armor off of him, and then he uses it to hide his power cosmic so that he can sneak back onto the Empiricon. He jumps off his board, leaving it floating because he knows that everyone will be able to sense that, and then he manages to get back inside. But as Dawn and her friends are running through the Empiricon, the board floats over by a window, and it waves back at her using her own reflection. She stops amazed at the magic mirror outside of the window, but just then the surfer comes stumbling out of the airlock and walks over to Dawn and her friends. Realizing that it's the Earth Girl he's looking for, he stands up. I'm Noron Rad, and I'm going to... But before he can finish his sentence, she interrupts him. I'm Dawn Greenwood, and I'm gonna save you! Oh, well, I'm well aware of who you are, Don Greenwood. I'm here to free you. Oh, I freed myself, and those guys, she says pointing to her friends. That's not gonna complicate things, is it? Well, it might. I only intended to save one prisoner. But then Battlejack's father jumps on the surfer! You stole my son's armor! Where is he? The surfer pushes the man aside and he explains that he took this armor off of his fallen son, and he is sorry for his loss. But Don walks over. Give him his son's armor back, Norrin! Don't you see you're upsetting him? Thinking about it, the surfer gives the man back his armor, and he apologizes again. The Empiricon's guards are growing closer, and their time is running short, so the surfer brings back his power cosmic, allowing him to silver up again, and then he begins to try and remove the heart from the center of the Empiricon. He begins to pump it up with power cosmic, and he asks Dawn to catch it. You want me to catch it? Really? Can't you do that? I can't. I'm gonna be busy. Doing what? The impossible. He then hits it with everything, knocking it loose and changing it into a symbol clapping monkey. With the heart removed, the Empiricon begins to tremble and shake. And during all of this, Zed has donned his reality armor and sword, and he's flew off trying to finish off the Never Queen. But now he can see that the Empiricon is falling, so he quickly turns back around from the Never Queen and he tries to return. The Surfer then speaks to the people of the Empiricon. You all must flee! The days of the Empiricon are over! Its destruction is imminent! But the people in the Empiricon refuse to leave. I mean, come on, some of them paid for like five more days. Oh, fine. Lo and behold, I am the Silver Surfer, and I am devouring your planet! Run for your lives! So on that note, the people of the Empiricon begin to run for their lives, while the Silver Surfer calls back his board, hops on it, and he takes Dawn and the Clapping Monkey out of the Empiricon. As they fly up into space, Dawn begins to hold her breath because, well, you know, they're in space. And the Surfer looks at her. Just stop it. What? How are you talking in space? I possess the power cosmic. How am I breathing in space? The power cosmic. And I'm not freezing because? Power cosmic. That's very convenient. That's the power cosmic. And just as they're about to get back to the Never Queen and return the clapping monkey that's her heart, Zed crashes into them and demands that the surfer fight him right now. So he stays to fight against him while Dawn floats over to the Never Queen. She holds the clapping monkey up and the Never Queen tells her that she must choose. What is the Never Heart to her? What future does she want? She sees it all, her past with her sister Eve. She sees her sister moving out, and then she sees her front gate, which she grabs and she asks what this even means. So she directs the board and they start heading into the Never Queen to put her heart back. Meanwhile, with Zed and the Surfer, they're battling it out and the Surfer realizes that the power cosmic is useless against the armor of Zed and that sword from another universe. Your power cosmic is useless against me! And without it, what are you? A former slave? A failed herald? A loser who was trapped for years on a backwater planet? No. I'm Norrin Rad, the man who sacrificed all, and my time on Earth has made me strong and taught me much. There are things that even a bald-headed fool can do. Knock knock! And with that, he pokes Zed in the eyes, making him drop the sword. Oh, wise guy, eh? And then Zed lunges at the Silver Surfer! But he grabbed the sword, and he's now stabbing Zed in the stomach. The sword undoes Zed, and he vanishes into limbo, the space between time and space. The Silver Surfer then calls out, To me, my board! And he flows over to Never Queen and Don Greenwood but the Never Queen thanks them for saving the entire galaxy. No, all of existence! As she fades away, she tells Dawn to remember. It is up to her to decide if the gate is open or if it is closed. All of her prisoner friends wave goodbye, and the Silver Surfer asks her, Dawn Greenwood, are you ready to go home? I guess now it's just you, me, and to me. To me? Is that one of your prisoner friends? No, I was talking about your board. You named my board to me? No, you did. You said, to me, my board. The Silver Surfer... 
She just looks at her, and then he laughs. What? Come on, Earth Girl. Let's get you home. And they flew off into space together. Now this is the beginning of an awesome run for the Silver Surfer in which he teams up with Don Greenwood and they just go explore the universe. Think Doctor Who in comic books. It's awesome. I loved it personally. And if you want to chat about this book or any others, make sure you follow us on Twitter at ComicStorian or you can follow us on Instagram at ComicStorian or you can follow us on our other channels, ComicStorian TV and Eligible Monster. And you know what, guys? I'll see you next time right here.